Thailand is another of the Southeast Asian countries that hosts Tesco's expansion overseas. Thailand has been through rapid industrialization and economic growth. And, like other Southeast Asian economies, it also went through a period of economic crisis in the late 1990s. What you, you find on the development of the business, we had a vision, this is the very beginning, before the first store opened, that uh, within five years we would open 25 stores, because basically there was no one here at that time, and we believed that the concept would be well accepted. So from the beginning we made our plans that way. And in doing that, we set down an infrastructure that would support that development. So very early on, even at the first store, we started to develop things like the supply chain. Uh, we had a distribution center for our first store. Uh, we knew that the, in order to develop as quickly as we wanted to, that we were going to have to bring the supply chain along with us. If we didn't do that, then we would never be able to get the goods that we needed to supply the stores because it just didn't exist. We'll look at the supply chain in a moment, but first, let's take a look at Tesco itself. In Thailand, as in Korea, Tesco's entry into the market has been through a partnership. In this case, with the Lotus Retail Group, part of the CP conglomerate. As in Korea, this building is multi-storey, although here the Tesco Lotus operation itself is on just one floor. The rest of the space is devoted to concessions. Tesco has been trading in Thailand for eight years, but this particular store at Rama 4 Street in Bangkok is just two years old. We're going to be uh, celebrating uh, two-year anniversary soon on the, the 28th. We lot, have a lot of customers to participate in, in that, on that day. So on that day, a person who born on the 28th can get a free cake for free. And then also we have a very big cake. So in the evening by 6 p.m. we'll cut and celebrate and give free cake and champagne and wine, everything for the customer who join that party in the evening. It's a long way from the beginning. Our first delivery that came to our first store uh, was delivered in the container that it was in was in trash bags. Uh, the guy who delivered it didn't even know what a purchase order was when we asked him what the delivery purchase order was. So we had nothing to receive it against. It took us about two hours to finally figure out what it was. And when we did, it wasn't even the item that we had ordered. That anecdote arises because Tesco Lotus emphasizes domestic sourcing from indigenous Thai suppliers and from Thai subsidiaries of transnational companies who manufacture locally. The multinational guys are, you know, yeah, you're correct. I mean, the multinational guys have been involved in consumer products, things like shampoos and detergents, and, uh, but they also carry over into food, of course, Coca-Cola and Pepsi and those coffee, Nescafe, those, those type of things. But they're not, they're not involved in fresh food. Uh, fresh food has traditionally been distributed here through a network of small vendors uh, to local markets. Uh, and that's still predominantly how it's done. 80% uh, of the uh, customers that shop with us also still shop at some of these traditional markets. So it's a changing environment at the moment but fresh food would not be dominated by big multinational players. It's still done through local markets. Now, the operation has become much more efficient. But before we look at just how that was achieved, let's look at the Rama 4 store. Fresh fruit and vegetables are central to the Thai diet reflecting local agricultural conditions and local preferences. The rancid smelling but sweet tasting durian is an acquired taste that hasn't made it yet to the West. Thai men generally spend some time as a Buddhist monk, so every family is acquainted with one or more. 
The obligation to support monks is made easier by the provision of pre-packed baskets, or monk buckets, which are especially popular at festival times. Rice is extremely important here too. There's much more space than you'll find in temperate countries and many more varieties. Fresh fish is also prized, and in this store they'll prepare and cook it for you while you wait. Mangoes are currently in season, so there's the expected display of those. But over in the hardline section, you'll also find the special tool used to retrieve mangoes straight from the tree. As in Korea, this is much more of a hypermarket than a supermarket. There's a wide range of electrical goods, for example, including a particularly popular range of fans as Thailand is currently enjoying a heat wave. I think the appeal comes in the, the fact that we've combined both shopping and entertainment, which is the way that the customers here uh, wanted it. Uh, they were used to shopping, and still do, in some of the traditional markets, but uh, they view shopping a bit differently than the Western world in that it is a family day out, uh, and that's what you see if you go to our stores. You'll find where there are four or five members of family They've come to do a little shopping, to have a meal while they're there, maybe rent a video, play some games. Uh, it becomes a family day out. You'll also find clothing, as you do in many UK Tesco stores, as well as musical instruments and financial services. This is a big step forward for Thailand. Credit is notoriously difficult to obtain, especially at rates that individual consumers can afford. For the financial service, we have two companies to attach to Tesco Lotus to provide a financial service. Let's say customers want to buy uh, high ticket value items. They can apply for a financial service that's good for them to, uh, to, to make them easily to purchase the merchandise. And also, uh, Tesco Lotus, we have we launched a, a Tesco Lotus card for customer to use as a credit card to shop in at any Tesco Lotus store. But it's what's behind the stores, the developing supply system, that's of most interest to us in Thailand. Initially it was quite difficult to get people to understand that our supply chain was built around on-time deliveries and uh, we actually built it into our systems that it considers how a vendor is performing and takes that into consideration when it's going to do an order and if the vendor's not very reliable it'll order a bit more so that we have coverage uh, if he's performing up to the standards we expect then it will back off a little bit and say okay this guy's reliable so we'll not order quite as much from him because we can expect to get it. Tesco Lotus have had to build up the supply system from scratch what we did is that because we had a clean slate, it's a pretty unique situation for you to come into. As a retailer, it's, it's nice to, uh, to have that. We could put in what we wanted. And so at the time, we were able to bring in the latest technology. Uh, and you find that throughout our stores. Uh, it was not an issue as far as getting our staff to using it. In fact, it's one of the key things they've said about liking, liking to work for us is that we do bring some of the latest technology. Where we found an issue was then there's a big step down between us and most of our suppliers. Uh, if you get beyond the top hundred, then the technology that you're looking at from some of these guys is probably a fax machine, uh, maybe a PC, but in most of the cases, not even a PC. We opened our fresh distribution center um, in October last year. Before that date, all fresh merchandise went direct to store, so direct to 33 stores. So it's very difficult for the business to ensure consistent quality and a consistent food safety record across the entire business. Now the opening of the DC enables us to centralize distribution of those products. We now buy against specific specifications. 
We check the product temperatures on arrival and condition on arrival. And we work very closely with the vendors um, to try and help them improve standards, improve efficiency, and improve the traceability and accuracy of temperature across the cold chain. We service 33 hypermarkets from here and six express convenience stores, which we've recently opened. The stores are throughout the length and breadth of Thailand, from Chiang Mai in the distant north, down to Hat Yai and Phuket in the south of Thailand. We deliver to all stores every day. Um, the furthest stores away are the ones in the south, which are over a thousand kilometers. So journey times of in, in excess of 20 hours each way. Um, so they're, they're very long distances for us to travel. Um, although the road infrastructure in Thailand is now quite strong. The biggest stores receive up to 10 40-foot vehicle loads a day. The smaller hypermarkets, only two or three. And the express stores are receiving one delivery a day of about half a small vehicle load. Our staple products really are rice, sugar, cooking oil, where we distribute in very large quantities. They come in in pallets and we distribute in pallets. They're very inexpensive items in Thailand. Typically a bag of rice will be selling for less than 50p. But at the top end through the site we also have um, hi-fi equipment, large screen TVs, which will be selling for up to a thousand pounds. So a big difference in terms of the value of the products and the characteristics of the products within the site. Medium-sized suppliers tend to supply across the range. They're particularly prevalent in fresh food um, and in fish, where we work with a lot of very small vendors um, who are small farmers and small producers. But even within the grocery range, once you get away from the leading items, there's a wide range of small and medium-sized vendors who've been servicing the business for many, many years. The development of this facility has enabled the small vendors to service the business that has got larger and larger without the need for them to develop substantial nationwide distribution capabilities. Thank <music> you.